I used to be a cross a competitive cross country skier. I used to be on the na Canadian national cross country ski team, and that was kind of my, the big thing in my life. We'll have to work hard to get past skiers like Lars Taylor in the 10K Classic. The pride of Vernon, BC, is the 89 junior champion. Lars Taylor is known as a speed merchant, the former Canadian junior racing in Europe, right up to world championship level. Would have been my first Olympics. Um, and I had a mountain bike accident and busted my back. That led to six months worth of rehab. I actually met Lars when I was his physiotherapist when Lars was first injured. And um, we remained friends and obviously we got on very well. And here we are today, we're married. So that's kind of how I met Lars. Then I had my accident, and uh, it took me a few years to get my act together after that. Um, and I got into, I, I built these all-terrain wheelchairs, and that kind of got me the freedom to get out and get around on rough terrain a little better, and I got into skiing, mono-skiing. I mean, he was very active. He wanted to get outside. We'd go out in his daily chair, and he would take me on on some adventures off-road in his daily wheelchair. So I got a taste of what um, what sort of mindset Lars was coming from. Growing up in Vernon, kind of through the 70s and 80s, that was kind of an epicenter for hang gliding in those days. And I was still deciding between even hang gliding and paragliding, but the idea of being able to move my own equipment around and everything and paragliding really appealed. I had not really heard of paragliding before Lars talked about it. And the next thing I know, you know, he was going to the West Coast Soaring Club meetings. And before I knew it, I had bought myself a glider, I had bought myself a harness, and I was, I was flying, I was pushing him off hills. But it's one of the most stressful things I could do in my life. And I don't know if it gets any easier either. I, my stomach gets churned up, it's just as like I was flying. It's, uh, it's all worth it because Lars gets to fly. He's going to be a happy guy when he comes down. And you know what? Once he's up there, he's just like every other pilot. There's no, there's no restrictions for him. It's one of the few things in the world that, you know, once I'm in the air, I, it's a level playing field. You know, it's, and uh, and that's that's pretty cool. You know, and when you're disabled, that's a pretty, you know, you get a lot of people that want to help you. But they also want, you know, there's also that element of losing control of your own life. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the air, everything is in your hands. The launching thing is difficult, like definitely harder to launch in a wheelchair than, than it is on foot. Landing is probably easier in a wheelchair than it is on foot. But in the air, we're talking, yeah, it's, and it's freedom. something in me that makes me do these things. That's when I'm truly happy to the depths of my soul kind of thing. When I'm up high and there's good lift and you can look down and, and you get that feeling of superiority like, like the eagles must feel and, and you just, you know, everything's right about that moment. Going through everything that I went through was pretty terrible. A lot of pain, a lot of emotional pain, a lot of physical pain. And, but the worst part about it now, looking back, is what I put my parents through. And I don't want to do that again. But on the other hand, I just, I can't deny who I am. And I think that's one thing you learn when you, when you have an accident that results in a major disability, is, is you really learn who you are at, at the core of your being. Thank you.